So Steve asked me to talk to you today a little bit about how to engage influencers in a post PR world, right? Everything's changing. Who are we kidding? That's not the right way to do that. I'm going to talk today about how not to be a PR fluffer. <laughs> this is where we're going because it's not enough just to be a PR person anymore. You have to be able to do all of it, right? If you're going to exert influence. I do promise for some of you in here, pictures of real bare naked ladies at the end of this presentation. I had to, my wife made me sit through Magic Mike. You can wait for the end of the presentation. <laughs> so it only seems like traditional marketing, PR, and advertising are dead, right? They're, they still matter, but they don't matter in the silos that we have always known them to, to be part of. Right? That's, you can't just do one or the other because all of a sudden in the social and technology have actually um, increased this. It's brought them all together. It's forced us to understand how all of them interact anymore and how they all work, to, and how they all work together. By the way, all the photos on here are photos that I've taken, so there's no Creative Commons. Use them at will. Um, and that's why the Schlitz one is on there. Cause we're going with the old school. This is a conversation that I had with Scoble on sort of defining what the new role of an influencer uh, is, right? Or somebody who's going to work with influencers because all of you are going to work with influencers in one way or another, or your companies are going to need to, to work with influencers or people are gonna work with you. So you wanna know how we're actually going to try and work with you. So I'll give you the inside scoop on this. Um, it's no longer enough to just be a great PR pro. We're getting to the point where, the, where you're not even going to recognize what a marketing person is, what a PR person is, or what an AR person is. You, sh you shouldn't have to recognize what they are. For the bad ones, you, we will recognize because they will stand out. Everyone else will just be part of your business. Matt, who took the trip up here with me uh, yesterday, he's sitting back there, had a, great, had a great quote. You have to walk the talk, right? The runway for when a PR person does the handoff, the traditional handoff of pitching a story and then giving, getting a, uh, their expert on the, on the phone with a reporter or another influencer. It used to be that's the way it would happen. Dial the phone, send an email. I'm the PR guy, I don't know squat. I'm just, knowing, I'm just, I'm just the guy that's gonna get you hooked up with this. You go take it and be the expert. No longer. That runway's gotten longer. I, the, good, the good influence, influencer managers, the good marketers, are now carrying the ball further. They're, they're getting deeper into the business. They are owning that conversation further down the chain before the expert comes in. You do that tactically by leading your spokespeople to those opportunities. Right, so as, I, as I'm sitting there and I am monitoring conversations that are happening, whether they're on Twitter, whether they're on Facebook, whether they're in comments um, of stories, whether they're just in, in conversations, I'm looking for opportunities to engage. I'm looking for opportunities to get my spokespeople involved, right? my, the real experts. But it forces me to spend, work with Spencer Ante on, on Twitter to get in there and what do I do? Something as simple as I'm in the conversation, it's a conversation we're having, and I just casually drop in the two experts that know a crap load more than I do on, this, on the topic. The only way you can do it is to live the fire hose. You have to be a media junkie. You have to be on constantly. You've gotta love the fire hose. That's wine, by the way. I couldn't find beer. That's local wine. Um, but you've got, you've, got, you've, got, you've got to be constantly ingesting everything. And not just tech news, not just stuff on GitHub. You've, you've got to pay attention to entertainment news. You've got to pay attention to political news. Everything that's happening, all those conversations, because you want to be able to tie them all into a story. Right? Look for opportunities to, to tie pieces of those into different stories. The second thing, be human. We hear the word social media all the time. I do not believe that is what we think it is. Right? 
it's a, we, we hear it and it's always, yeah, it's always tools, right? It's always tools or it's always marketing or it's always, you know, pushing stuff out there. There's not a whole lot of social involved in that. Don't take your business so seriously or yourself. This was one of the funniest things I've seen. Samsung Canada, somebody sent them in a, 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 requ a request for help. They also drew a picture of a dragon. Samsung Canada, I'm going to assume probably fairly corporate, fairly, fairly uh, buttoned up. What do they do? They drew him a picture of a kangaroo in response. Now, we all think that's funny because it's a picture of a kangaroo and a dragon. Of course it's funny. But the, re but the reality is, if you look deeper at that, how, are, how many of us now would think, think differently of Samsung? Probably a bunch of us. I know that guy probably does. Why? Because, because they, they humanized themselves. They showed that they weren't just a bot back there or just a corporate drone. They were actually having fun. And you can, take, you can, you can have fun to an extent. So I, I'm a corporate guy. And I have to toe the line a little bit. But it doesn't mean that I have to just con consistently spout out the corporate line. Right? I don't have to just stay on script the whole time. You can have some fun with it because it does humanize you. Be, let yourself go a little bit and have some fun. I think my favorite is the past gas one. If you take anything away today, this is the slide. This is the one. All we hear with social media is sell, sell, sell. All we hear with marketing is sell, sell, sell. All you hear with PR is pitch, pitch, pitch. Stop. It doesn't work that way, right? You don't have to do that, especially in the, especially in the markets that we all work in. If I came up here and tried to market to you, if I came up here and tried to sell to you, I'm sure somebody would chuck an empty bottle at me. I am positive of it. That's not what you do. You, get, you have to be part of the community. Don't market, to, don't market to people. People don't want to be marketed to. They want to be talked to. They want to be interacted with. They want to have real conversations with humans. So be different. When one of your competitors is actively out marketing, see them as a human, not as a customer. Be different. Participate. So here's an example. Nike during the Olympics, were not an, they were not an official Olympic sponsor. So all the rules in the Olympics say they can't do anything. They can't touch the Olympics. It's, it's beyond strict. What, is, what, what do they do? The Egyptian athletes are, are, are sitting there walking around, walking around the Olympic Village with all, of their, with all kinds of fake stuff, fake Nike gear on. Now. Nike could have said cease and desist. They could have caused all kinds of a ruckus. Instead, what do they do? I'm going to take advantage of that. And that's what they did. They did it because they did the right thing. They said, hey, don't wear, don't, you don't have to wear this cheap stuff. We're going to do right by you. If you don't have uniforms, you don't have enough money for the uniforms, we're going to kick in. It's going to cost us, what, a couple of bucks for, for, to outfit the Egyptian team. And that's what they did. That's huge. They, do the right, they did the right thing. I'm sure somebody realized it was a marketing opportunity, but, it, but I'll bet you it wasn't the first thing they thought of. Local bike shop where I, where I live, out in, uh, in between Philly and New York, right along the Delaware River. It's a place called Doylestown Bike Works. They don't market. They are active on Facebook. They do group rides. They, every Friday night, they open the door and they open their fridge and everybody's in there drinking beer in the bike shop. And they just sort of interact with the, with the, local, with the local cycling community. And I'm sure that there are other um, local, local bike shops that do the same thing or at least something similar. But because they don't market to me, because they're not trying to sell to me like two other bike shops in the, in the area, because they don't do that, I am... I am if I go to buy another bike or, or equipment, I go there because they're part of my community, right? They're not on the periphery trying to poke into the community. 
with marketing stuff. They are actually part of the. They're actually part of our community. That's a small beer in Barcelona. It actually took strength to lift, lift that thing. I had to drink it quick. Um, always go big. I forget who I forget who said go big. Always I took always go big. Um, get mad at complacency. Right? We're all we're all there. Don't don't accept that. Hey, that's the way it's always been done. Or this ju- this works. Let's just do that. Go big. Have have fu- have some fun with some stuff. Be helpful. Right. So when you're working with influencers, make sure that you're make sure that you're doing stuff that helps them. If it's not even an influencer, if it's a community, your job is to help them. An example an example of it. We were. At, at Alcatel Lucent, we were um, asked to put on a developer conference, and we don't have a whole lot of. At the time, we didn't have a whole lot of uh, cred in the developer in the developer community. And putting on a conference, uh, it, especially if you want to get about 500 developers there, is a very costly endeavor. So we came up with this idea, and I talked to Eric Norlin at Glucon, and I said, "Hey, what if we wanted to support the community?" And, and underwrite it. And lights went off and that was it. So we became the corporate underwriter of Glucon uh, in May, I think it is, or right after, right after Monkey Gras. We did it and we didn't set a whole lot of rules to it. I just said, we just wanna be the corporate underwriter. We wanna, we wanna support you guys, and we, I mean the community. We wanna support the community. We made it up as we went along after that. And we did that because we didn't want to be seen as, you know, a corporate, just a regular sponsor. We wanted to help build. So we did demo pods that brought 15 startups on in, and all they had to do was, get, was bring a laptop there. Uh, it, we got nothing out of that, right? It wasn't, there wasn't a goal to get something out of that. It was just the right thing to do. So part, when, you, when you start to look at your marketing activities, look to look to do stuff that builds rather than takes away from, looks to take away from the community. And for the love of the flights, the Eddie monster, have some fun. So we're going to go into the fun part here. So Steve, Steve talked about the little trip that we made. This is how it started. One tweet out to dogfish on a Friday night. And I, will, and I will let you know that even if you try, which I did, you cannot get the black Trans Am. You can get it to show up, but they put a rope around it. They will not let you drive it, because I checked. <laughs> <laughs> that was what we were going to We were going to give up cases of beer just to drive that on up here. Um, that's literally Friday, on a Friday night. Just got the idea and said, hey, let's do this. And that, and they jumped right, they jumped right back on it. So our first stop, New Jersey's oldest brewery, 1987, I think it was, something like that, I mean, real old. Uh, It sits right on the banks of the Delaware River in a little town called Lambertville. Uh, It's River Horse Brew. If you guys are tweeting out there, give those guys some love. The head brewer is Chris, and he gave us a nice case right off the line of his Brewer's Special. So we will have, we have some of that tonight. These guys, and it's really good. So it was 10 a.m. in the morning and I was interviewing him and he pulled it on out, so that was good. Second stop, we got to go see Dogfish Head. Uh, I've got a video from Sam that's gonna come up in a, in a second. That's Matt looking at the original Machines and the original apparatus for the for dogfish. That's that is the they've got it in a like a museum shop right there. Uh, pretty pretty cool. Those guys were awesome for us. They and and it's interesting to watch them in light of or in, in retrospect of the conference because they've gotten bigger, right? It's dogfish. They've got they've they've grown, but if you look, they've really kept their craft roots. They've really done a good job of keeping their culture and their creativity and their, in their words, their off-centeredness. And you can really feel it when you go down there and you talk to them. You'll see it in the, in the video. 
seven states we went through. This was East Hartford, Connecticut. That is the brewery for Old Burnside. They do growlers. We have a couple of growlers that came up in the truck. We had to get some ice because they had an ice house right next to them, so we've, which is probably all over the back of my truck right now, but that's good. The beer's still cold. Uh, so we got growlers. Um, the place was no bigger than the size of somebody's garage. And these guys are just making some really great Scottish beers because nobody makes, nobody makes Scottish beers around there. So they were making that. And then we went up through Boston and did a final stop at Harpoon. Two more growlers that we brought. One was red velvet and the other was pumpkin, I think. Uh, but it's, they, are, they are beers that you can only get out of the tasting room. So they are not viable. So, we can, so we'll have some of those tonight too. So this is a video from Sam. Hi, I'm Sam Caligioni from Dogfish Head Craft Brewery here in Milton, Delaware. Our buddy Mike, a uh, big tech guy like you folks, is coming by to grab some beer for us to bring up to Maine for this conference. And he asked me to talk a little bit about the spirit of collaboration that is really at the heart of the craft brewing movement, uh, thinking about potentially more and more of that approach could be applied to the world of tech. Like, could you imagine uh, Steve Jobs calling up Michael Dell like 10 years ago and be like, dude, I'm out of W's for my keyboard. Can I borrow some W's? And him being like, yeah, 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 I got plenty of W's. I'll give you that. Doesn't seem to happen too often in your industry, but it's really at the heart of our industry and it's kind of at the heart of the small brewer's success story. And it really started when our industry started. Uh, 1980, when uh, 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 Fritz Maytag uh, heard a knock on the door and it was Ken Grossman just starting Sierra Nevada Brewery. And he opened that door right up and Ken's like, dude, can I buy a few old pumps from you and old bottling lines, some other things to get started. And Fritz said, heck yeah, even though you're a competitor, you're a little brewery like us, we want to see you grow. And so that collaboration uh, spirit is something that we take to heart at Dogfish Head. We've collaborated with breweries from you know, Copenhagen, New Zealand, uh, Amsterdam, uh, Italy, all around the world. But even within this country, uh, who the, the other little breweries that you'd think would be our competitors, we see them in, as brothers in arms. We've collaborated with breweries from California, Colorado, Michigan, uh, New Hampshire, even a brewery right down the road from where you guys are having your meeting right now, our friends at Allagash, uh, we did a collaborative beer with them, and if you're out in Portland and you find Allagash on draft, uh, have yourself a pint of it. Uh, we sold when our, our kegging line got too small for us, we reached out to Allagash, a brewery we love, and said, hey, Rob Todd, can you use this thing? And he said, yep. Uh, so that's the kind of karma that's at the heart of what we do. Uh, we do it with other breweries. We do it here internally at our own company. That's all of my coworkers from Dogfish on the wall in our conference room. So when decisions are made, it's kind of like everybody looking at us saying, don't fuck up. Our livelihoods are at stake with the decisions that leadership makes. And they're out there collaborating with us to make this company move forward every day. So. Uh, Enjoy your time up in Maine, try the awesome local beers, and think about ways that your industry can work closely together to make this a better beer drinking world. Cheers. I'm a, I'm a beer nerd. That's kind of cool for me. <laughs> uh, so that was really cool of Sam to do that. Uh, and all we did, it all started with a tweet. That was it. One idea and a tweet. No strategy behind it, just sort of said, hey, it fits in with what Monktoberfest is doing. It fits in with the crowd. Let's see if we can make it happen. Just so happens that it worked. Um, and, you know, and they were, willing to, they were willing to try. Here's the other one. If you're going to do stuff, don't worry if you're going to go to corporate jail. It doesn't matter. This is a slide we used. So I was building a, present, I was building a presentation for one of my execs. I think, this was at, I think this was actually at um, Defrag. And we need, we are, we, we are, we're in the telco industry. So we, want, we needed to talk about big pipes. And we got a keg. <laughs> and have passion, right, outside of tech. So a lot of times when you're in marketing, you're in PR, you're in your job, your job is to focus on your job. Sometimes you have to color outside the lines. I have two daughters. 
I have a, an executive, uh, a, fem a female executive. This stuff matters, right? And it colors outside of the lines of my role within a corp within the corporation. But it, again, it humanizes me. It humanizes the company. It makes it, and it, and it works for for making sure that this stuff gets noticed. This was when this was when Scoot uh, effed up beyond belief. The company's name is up there, Scoot. Just so everybody knows again, just want to make sure everybody knows. Um, right next to the Saudis okay and the women for the Olympics. This, this is very important. Have the conversations everyone else is afraid to have. Justin's running uh, the camera back there. He and I worked together on a program at South By that we, uh, that we called Flight Club. It was for one of the big airlines in the, in the industry. Don't sit down. Um, Oh wait, never mind. Uh, it was for one of the big airlines in the industry, and they needed. They were going to roll out their a, an API program. They didn't know what what they wanted to do. Didn't know how to do it. Didn't know whether it was viable. They came to us and said, "What can you do?" Well, we knew a bunch of different influencers, right? People in different companies, head of API programs at different companies. What can you guys do? So we pulled together a roundtable discussion at a Mexican restaurant in at South by. And we just literally had everybody come in and sit down, and we had a when we and we had a dis and we had a discussion. C again, coloring outside of the lines of what a traditional PR or illustration or marketing person would do, because we really did ask tough questions. We didn't know what the outcome was going to be, right? There was a good chance we were going to have everybody around this table, and they were going to say, "You're nuts. This thing's never going to work. Why would you do that?" You just do it, and, and the customer loved it because they got frank feedback. On your messaging, my Twitter ID is the underscore spin MD, the spin doctor. Don't spin, spin's dead. It does, it, you just don't, just be honest. It's like, yeah, maybe this thing doesn't work as well, or um, you know, maybe, maybe our internal processes aren't, you know, need some work. Make people remember you. The backstory behind this, we go to a, uh, we rent a house at the Outer Banks of uh, North Carolina every year, and I we took this picture of me and replaced one of their pictures with it, and it was still hanging up this year. <laughs> I encourage you all to do that at other places too. So Fake Grimlock did this. Um, uh, John, John wrote a story on it uh, the, other, the other week in Read Write Web. You want people to remember you. The only way to do it is to be, be awesome. Don't be boring, right? Nobody cares about boring. Have a freaking story, right? Don't just go in there with messages. Get, a back, get, a, get the back story, right? Tell, you, we like going to movies. We like watching TV. We like reading books. What are they? They're stories. So always have a story. Who's the protagonist? Who's the antagonist? Um, get, get, to that story. get to that story. Be creative. Care about something beyond your product. So that is making sure that your company actually stands for something, right? That you have a boogeyman out there that you're, that you're, trying, to, that you're trying to beat, that you're trying to do something that's bigger than what, a, um, than, than what the industry is about. And, to, and again, on that, take a position. Nobody wants somebody that's straddling the line. Either you believe in something or you don't believe in it. So real quickly, because I want to go drink beer, five quick last things to remember. Oh, wait, I did forget about this. Which do you think Stephen would rather drink? The facial hair beer? <laughs> go ahead, make the call. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so real quickly, be always on. This was at the World of Beer in uh, Naperville, Chicago. We had James and uh, I happened to be out there, and this guy comes up and he had Arduinos in his bag and just starts making stuff. 
Don't overdo it. Again, another South by shot. This may be my favorite picture of all. I live literally where the Revolutionary War came through, right on the other side of the, right, right on the other side of where Washington crossed the Delaware River, middle of the frickin' sticks. I'm driving one day on the way to the airport, and on a back road with a Linux license plate in Pennsylvania. So I got fairly close to him and made sure I got the picture. Wasn't sure when I'd see that again. <laughs> I think that one stands for itself. That was uh, in, Ve in Vegas. Actually a really nice guy. He was fun to hang around with. This should be every team's motto. This should be every team's logo. Just get it done. So I promised, right? I predicted, the, I predicted the groans a long time ago. <laughs> Those are the real bare place. So anybody has questions? I've got rambling answers. <laughs>